we've got a seal fire simulator. Basically, we'll have a seal fire. First tool uh, we're going to use is a foam wand. This piece of the foam wand we're going to show you is this tube. It's been burned up today, but that's okay. So in the bag, it'll be like this, right here. We didn't drop it and bend it. There's a reason it's bent. There's a reason it has holes in it. If you look through it, some of you can see through it, it has uh, some deflectors, basically creates a venturi, pull a little more air in, aerate the foam a little bit. The reason we have the bend is because of uh, we want it against the tank wall and shoving it back. This actually is going to go over the tank wall when you go up the landing. So, uh, Chauncey told a story earlier about um, putting this up on a barge. And it had an elbow on it. They threw four of them in a hole, just like this. Turned them on, all four of them went flying out. Because it's reactionary force. So to go back to the shop, how do we create non-reaction? We just put a simple T on it. So we add this T on, and we've changed the direction of the force, left and right. So this is our first part that we add on. Since it's a seal fire, we want this T on. We want to get it tight as we can and back it up. We don't want it super loose so it doesn't unscrew and lose it. What we have on here on the ends are basically stream straighteners. You got so much turbulence coming down to that 90, we want to straighten it back out. Our foam will run about 40 feet left and right off of each side. This also carries a plug in the back and the front. We want to take one of them out to capture the space down so when it's going over the side of the wall, and we'll keep adding pieces to it to see how it hangs, we want it against the tank shell, just like that. So we got left and right going into your foam dam. We have this going straight down the wall. So our next piece to put on, every tank is different, and we'll go over what's in the bag, will be a 90. We're going to build this on the ground. We're not going to build it on the tank. We're going to carry everything up. We get that 90 on. I leave everything a little bit loose, not super tight. So I went all the way tight and back around. So we don't know what kind of throat we need. So in the toolkit, we've got all sizes of pipes to make different throats. So throughout the day, we know that we need medium-sized throat on here. This is just to get us over the shell. We screw this one on. Same way, tighten it. I back this one off a couple of times. We want to leave this one sloppy where it'll spin, and I'll show you why once we get to building it. All right, so here we need another 90 to go back down. Same way, I'm gonna leave it a little sloppy too. All right, next piece is what's gonna go on the outside of the shell. And you can see this has some uh, threads in it, some couplings here, and that's for some legs. And we'll show you those legs. We've got short legs, long legs, um, and we'll build those uh, when we get done. All right, put that together. So now we've got basically a foam wand built. The only thing left is we've got to be able to hook a fire hose to this. Inch and three quarter, this flows 95 gallons a minute. So we've got some adductors out there. We'll hook 95 gallons a minute to it. All right, so we carry everything up dry. We're not going to hook a hose to it. Somebody be carrying it behind you. What we want you to do is you go up to the tank shell. This is why we left this a little sloppy. We get up to the tank shell down and just basically toss it over and let it go. And it'll fall into position. Tug on it one time and just leave it. <coughs> See how short, uh, short the tank is? This is going to be a problem for our hose. So all we'll do when this is over, we'll just tilt this to the side, hook our hose up, and just leave it. We'll exit off of the uh, off of the tank, charge it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Then we'll go back up and check it. That'll create a safe space for us. In the tool bag, you got all kinds of parts and pieces. Uh, anybody know what this is? Cellar nozzle. You can put this cellar nozzle on for different applications. It'll spin and produce a tremendous amount of foam coming out of it. 
They also have a pendant head with it, just like a sprinkler head, put it on, and it's lateral. That's in the bag. And also, we can use these. I think uh, Eric talked yesterday a little bit about basically a three-dimensional fire cone roof tank. Uh, you knock out the expanded metal, throw some foam in it. The only way to put it out is add dry powder. So once you get your dry chemical, we screw these on, put a foam wand in, work the same way. This flows about 10 pounds a second out of each of these. So both of these go in, swirls foam in, out the eyebrow man. Extinguishes the fire. We'll leave it just like this. We'll build it like this. We'll take it up. Uh, need a couple guys carrying that. Somebody with inch and three quarter hose. Somebody manning uh, the adductor. When we call for foam, cut it on. We'll let that flow for 30 seconds a minute. Capture the area. Then we'll do the dash coat. 